In this video, we will be taking a look at a sunburst chart in PowerPoint. We will start by defining what a sunburst chart is. Then we will look at when to use a sunburst chart. Third, we will create the sunburst chart and learn how to edit it. And finally, we will look at comparison between tree map chart and sunburst chart with an example. So let's begin by defining a sunburst chart. Now a sunburst chart is pretty similar to the tree map chart as we are displaying hierarchical data. If you remember from my tree map video, let's consider this illustration of a tree again. Now in a tree, we have this branch, then a stem of a leaf and the leaf itself. So whenever you have this hierarchical data where you have branch at the top, then stems, and then the leaves, a sunburst chart is an ideal candidate for showing this type of data. So let's take an example from finance industry. Here is the flowchart representation of the same data. So if we look at this flowchart from the previous slide, here the quarters are our branches, the months are stems, and these are all leaves. If we look at the table here, we have the data by four quarters, then we have 12 months in the next column, and in the third column, which is the leaf column, we have data for just four weeks. And for the rest of them, we are just using the monthly data. That's because the monthly data is small for the other months. So it doesn't make sense to split that by weeks. So let's create the sunburst chart on a blank slide. Click on insert, click on chart, locate sunburst chart, which is right below tree map chart. We only have one variation for this chart, which is a good news click on OK. Now I'll go to the previous slide. I will just copy this entire table and paste my data here. Let me enlarge the size of our chart so we can see properly. OK, so let's understand this chart. At the top, we have title. We don't seem to have legend right now, which is easy to enable. Just click on this plus sign in the top right corner and click on legend. So we have three rings in this chart. The first ring is showing the quarter data, which is the first column. The second column is the stem, which are these months. And the third column is the leaf column. And we just have four weeks of data. Now you'll notice that we can compare data across each of these rings so we can compare quarters with other quarters we can compare individual months with other months we can also compare weeks although we just have four weeks let's close the data sheet and see what options we have for the chart now double click on the label any label will do on the right hand side we have three options right now category labels are enabled that's why we see these months and quarter labels let's enable the value we can see all the week values now, as well as the month values, except for Feb, because we are showing Feb data by week. So instead of showing the total of this here, it's showing the week data here. We can also choose to enable the series name, although it doesn't really add much. If I double click on the shapes outside of the labels, we see the series option on the right. However, there is nothing in it. Let's look at how to change the colors for a chart. So you can change the colors for entire branch by clicking on a branch and then clicking again. You cannot change the color for just the single branch. So I cannot change color for just this one alone. I can change the color for a stem as long as there is no leaf associated with it. If your stem has leaf associated with it, I cannot select this individually. I can select the leaves individually so I can select a single leaf like so. You cannot control the colors of every single section. So that's another limitation of this chart. To change the color, select a specific section, then go to shape fill and change the color. Those are all the options we have when we click on the chart. There is no option to increase the width of our sections or increase or decrease the size of this hole. We cannot even change the position of our legend. There is no option to rotate the chart. So our orientation is pretty much fixed. We cannot even increase or decrease the chart size by clicking on this plot area 
and then trying to drag from these handles. So this chart is very rigid when it comes to customization. It just lets us enable disable these values here and maybe make changes to the data sheet to an extent. So this could be good for some people, but not so good for others who like to have a lot of flexibility with their charts. Now let's look at what happens if we hide different columns in our data sheet. So if I were to hide the branch column, let's hide this. The chart now just shows month and the week data. If we hide the stem column, the chart now rearranges itself like this, although I'm not sure how useful this is. While we are at it, let's also hide the leaf data. One thing you will notice here is we had the Feb data split by weeks. However, when you disable the week column, it adds the total of all four weeks next to Feb month here, so 1.2. So that's a nifty feature. If we were to hide, let's say two columns, this now just turns into a plain donut chart, which is kind of cool. Now that's pretty much the extent of customization you can do with this chart. There's not much to it beyond what we just saw. Finally, let's compare the tree map chart with the sunburst chart with two examples. So this is our quarterly data that we just used for sunburst chart. Let's make both tree map and sunburst chart with the same data. This is how both charts would look like. We have already seen in detail about the sunburst chart. Now compare that to the tree map chart. Now here we could clearly compare every quarter with each other, then the months with each other. And finally, we could also drill down for a specific month and then compare the weekly data. Here you could notice we could see the data for STEM, which is our month ring. If you compare now to tree map chart, it just shows us the entire branch and the leaves individually. However, there is no specific visualization for seeing the stem. So here the stem was our month. We do have month. However, there is no difference between the month and the week. So they all are clubbed together at the same level. So I cannot really compare individual months with this week data here we don't have that problem so a tree map chart as you can see is suitable to compare relative sizes within a branch or the branch as a whole let's look at second example now this is the same example from my tree map video so this data is for food industry where we have a cafe and we are trying to compare our sales data across breakfast and lunch and we have these many categories to compare if I create both charts for this data, this is how they will look like. If you have seen my tree map video, this chart would be familiar to you. Here I have plotted revenue numbers, but in my video I have plotted price. So when I just look at this chart, I can immediately tell which category is my best seller and which is the least selling category. Across both lunch and breakfast, salad sells the most, while tea sells the least. So a tree map is a fantastic chart to find patterns. So imagine if you had a large tree map with multiple branches, the chart would be really good at spotting patterns like the best selling categories or which categories are too weak. Now we have the same data shown here using a sunburst chart, but it's quite confusing. And just as we were easily able to spot the largest selling category here, here. It's quite difficult to do that here because this chart is made for a completely different purpose, which is to drill down the data within a branch, but that's not important here. Also here, because the stems are repeated, like we have two foods and two beverages, it just adds to the confusion. It makes little sense to compare this food with this food. The inner branch is a bit useful because it shows us that lunch is a bigger segment than breakfast, but then stem segment is of little use. And because stem takes up so much of space, it ends up de-emphasizing our main data, which is this outer ring. And as a result, we cannot easily spot trends like we did with this chart. So I hope you got a sense of when to use a tree map chart versus a sunburst chart. Just to recap quickly, if you need to drill down data from a branch to stem to leaf, and you have unique stems, a sunburst chart is most likely to be a better choice. But if you are looking to find the patterns and quickly pick out which is a bestseller category and the comparison between the branches or stems don't really matter, a tree map chart is more suitable for that. 
So that's it for this video. I hope you found this useful. Please leave a like and subscribe for future videos and I will catch you next time.